testosterone and women. Most people think testosterone is a male hormone. What does it have to do with women? Let's find out in today's podcast. Hi, I'm Dr. Neelima Deshpande and this is V for Vagina, the podcast that dispels myths and misunderstandings about the vagina and empowers women to embrace their sexual energy, vitality and well-being. The lady sitting in front of me was beaming. She'd been menopausal and had trouble with her sex life. She got a prescription for testosterone and it had revitalized her completely. She said, I'm amazed how my body responds. It wasn't like this always. Why didn't I have this before? Well, the truth is, you already have some testosterone in your body. It's not something external you really need. Unless, of course, you're menopausal like this woman was. And even then, that need changes from person to person. Even in younger women, the amount of testosterone your body produces is probably a tenth, one-tenth of what men's bodies produce. A large amount of your testosterone comes from the ovaries as well as the adrenal glands. In women, testosterone has just an important role to play as it does in men. Libido and sexual thoughts is only one thing that women know about testosterone in their bodies. But some key functions are also about metabolism. Testosterone has a really important role to play in lipid and sugar metabolism. You see, testosterone governs muscles, their strength, their volume, and in particular, the amount of glycogen that muscles store. I know you wouldn't believe me, but the muscles in your body also are part of your hormone system. The way the muscles handle glycogen and insulin is determined by the efficiency in which testosterone behaves in a woman's body. How these muscles respond to intense aerobic exercise or strength training is also dependent on testosterone levels. A woman's testosterone levels can determine how she handles pregnancy, delivery, lactation, even though the levels are really, really tiny. As a woman goes through menopause and postmenopause, the adrenals become the main source of testosterone. As we look at how testosterone is secreted from the adrenals, we know that the base chemical, which is called cholesterol, is responsible for manufacturing a lot of the sex steroid hormones. DHEA is a very important substrate. When stress levels are high and cortisol peaks, especially with chronic stress, if cortisol is stimulated all the time, it hijacks all of these other hormones that the adrenals produce. And women get hit with a double whammy. So there's decreasing testosterone levels as they age, and then even the adrenal gland that produces that small amount of testosterone, that gets hijacked. No wonder many women going through menopause who are stressed by their menopause symptoms or the changes that menopause brings in the body they find that their body doesn't respond the same way. They no longer have the sexual thoughts or sex-seeking behavior they enjoyed when they were younger. We'll talk about libido and desire in a little bit. Well, what can boost testosterone and its influence, especially for older women? Muscle mass is really important. And loss of muscle mass, especially as we age, both in men and women, is a really, really crucial factor in longevity and health and maintenance of all of these different metabolic pathways in our body. Testosterone typically is boosted with exercise, strength training exercise that builds muscles. In order to build muscle, you also need a good amount of protein, the full complement of amino acids that helps you manufacture these muscles when your body is put under stress. Not any kind of stress. This is exercise stress, muscle building stress. When you challenge a muscle, you make it grow, but it needs protein to grow. Another important aspect is your circadian rhythm. Is your sleep and wake cycle determined by sunrise and sunset? When you're working within the circadian rhythm, your body has more resources to work with. It's not being disturbed all the time. Digestion is more efficient. Protein utilization is more efficient. And muscle building is for sure more efficient. It doesn't matter how much you exercise. If you're constantly stressed out, you eat food late, you don't sleep on time, you will have trouble building muscle. If you have trouble building muscle, for sure you have trouble experiencing the benefits of testosterone in your body. Overexercising, something that women can do a lot at menopause in their attempt to lose belly fat, can also be a challenge to the adrenal glands. 
and cause testosterone to either decline or not be produced in the quantities they need. Sometimes low testosterone levels can also be associated with mental symptoms, psychological symptoms like despair and depression. Exercise helps with a lot more than just building muscle. It helps stabilize your mood and manage depression, anxiety, and get a much better handle on your emotions. Women going through menopause need to understand that it's not just about exercise. It's not just about eating protein. You need to get your life in order. You need to go back to the basics of managing your breath, your hydration, getting sunlight exposure, managing your circadian rhythm, sleeping enough and on time, which can be a challenge yeah, because 30%, 40% of women will experience insomnia and up to 60% of women going through menopause will have some sort of sleep disturbance. So tracking your sleep and getting the best sleep you can makes a big difference to whether that testosterone is actually going to have any effect on your body. And then comes the option of getting hormone therapy with testosterone. Suffice to say, if you don't have enough estrogen circulating in your blood, the testosterone supplements may not actually have much effect. Testosterone has a key role to play in how you go about seeking sex, thinking sexy thoughts, and wanting sex from your partner. This is one of the reasons why testosterone supplementation at menopause is validated. It's for women with desire disorders. By chance upon another thing that happens at menopause. Desire is a complex phenomenon. It's not just about thinking sexy thoughts. It's also about wanting to be with the person you want to have sex with. I know for sure many women at menopause who rediscover how to masturbate, how to find their orgasms, how to engage their vaginas. They find they're not really attracted to their partners anymore. It's maybe because of life's changes. It may be because their partner is no longer as attractive as they once were. They've let themselves go, so they've got a big beer belly or they're obese or they're not very fit. It may be because their own body image has changed. It may be because as a couple, they've started to drift apart, both in terms of the, their life vision and their goals. In spite of this, if you look at a partner and you feel the desire for closeness, intimacy and comfort, companionship, this can compensate for a lack of libido. You might not have sexy thoughts, but because you want closeness, you can engage in sexual intimacy and pleasure and get going and find that it brings you closer. It improves your ability to communicate with each other, have conversations that matter. You become a lot more open to welcoming this person back again into your life if for any reason you've drifted apart. So desire is not just about having lots of testosterone. Libido, maybe. Both partners, actually, as they go through this period of their 40s and 50s, can experience decreases in testosterone. Men experience it as well, but not as drastically as women. Having a fit, able body goes a long way in boosting testosterone levels or maintaining them, certainly. And having a fit, able body does make you feel sexy. It goes a long way in maintaining your body image and your ability to be flexible and strong in bed. My message to you is, don't give up on your testosterone levels. Keep up your fitness, build up your protein intake, build up your muscle with strength training, lower your stress levels and increase oxytocin. And rather than focusing on libido, focus more on desire. And then you can start trusting your body again. Remember to like, subscribe and share this podcast with whoever you think needs to hear it. If you'd like to talk to me one-on-one -on -one for a personal consultation, get in touch with me via my website, www.drdrneelima.com and you'll find a button there where you can click and book a slot with me. And I'll be sure to respond to any of your queries. Thank you. Disclaimer. This podcast is for general information purposes only. It does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's or listener's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment.